the only thing you can do is take that chance. The next time you feel that maybe a sense of dread, if you know something isn't right, trust it, follow it, do something about it. Even if you're worried because you haven't trusted it before, maybe prove yourself right this time. The only thing you can do is do it. This is the Energy Within Podcast, all about accessing, nurturing, and building your energy and confidence so that you can get unstuck and design your life the way you want. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, and the bridge between your reality and your spirituality. First of all, apologies <laughs> if you just heard JJ in the background, if you happen to be able to hear any moments of the video that he's watching, <laughs> his disposition can be a little sensitive sometimes. So sometimes it's best not to rock the boat. So I didn't bother turning it down or <laughs> I have the door open. It's just me and JJ at the moment. So hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. <laughs> But today is episode 106, and in looking back at last week's episode about feeling strong and feeling like you have to be strong or show that you're strong all the time and that getting tiring and frustrating, I feel like that was a good episode, but I also felt like I may not have given you very many tangible strategies or steps to take to move past that. So I feel like we did a good job of acknowledging the fact that that feeling exists. And as cheesy as it sounds, that really is the first step. Something as simple as acknowledging where you are, what you're feeling, why you're feeling it, and truly being honest that you do want to make a change. Just that simple act of deciding to make a change can shift your energy so much. And again, I'll reference you back to the episode I did with my soul sister, Jess, about manifesting and the difference between the divine feminine and the divine masculine and why those need to be in balance and how that has an effect, but also how that came up in some shadow work and how the simple act of deciding to shift my energy made a huge, noticeable difference pretty much immediately. So I speak from experience when I tell you that the simple act of deciding to make a change and being serious about it shifts your energy massively. So sometimes that might be all you need to do. But there are, if you're like me, so many ups and downs where you have that initial high of, okay, I'm going to do this. I got this. You have all the ideas running through your head. You know what you're going to do. You're looking forward to everything. And then either something happens or it's simply the next day and you didn't get enough sleep and now you're dragging and you're not feeling it anymore. And maybe it takes you a couple days or even longer (laughs) to get back to that motivation. And as helpful as motivation is, we know that it doesn't always last. So we need to find a way to get ourselves to keep moving even when the motivation isn't there. And I'm not anywhere near perfect at this. (laughs) I just know it to be true. So let's work on this together. So one of the first things that we can do to get out of this struggle loop, to stop feeling like We just have to keep being strong and we have to keep trying all the time, but we're also never going to get anywhere because we're stuck in that loop. For me, and probably for you too, implementation is a huge factor. So I am guilty of being an information collector. I love learning. I loved school. There were parts of it I didn't enjoy, (laughs) but overall... I mean, honestly, if I could get paid to be an eternal student, 
I'd probably be happy. <laughs> I don't know that I would be fulfilled, but I'd probably be happy. I have taken, started, and not finished <laughs> many, many courses. I'm getting better at finishing a lot of the ones that I have bought and not finished, but I, I'm also like, I'm on a roll lately. Let's just say I'm on a roll with moving through the lessons and actually taking action. <laughs> That's the big thing for me. Like, I would go to conferences, seminars, I would take all the notes, I would get really excited. I might try one or two things once or twice, and then that would be it. And the motivation and the excitement would fall away if, say, it wasn't working or it didn't seem like it was going to work quickly enough. <laughs> Because we also get kind of stuck in this immediate gratification desire as well. If we don't see the results that we're hoping for quickly enough, we want to give up. Another brief example, one that I'm sure you've had a similar experience with if you've ever tried to lose weight, tried to start a workout program, gone on a diet, anything fitness related like that, even as a fitness professional... I struggle a little bit. Like, I know what I need to do. I don't necessarily need anyone to tell me, but that doesn't mean I always want to do it or that I'm personally successful at it. <laughs> I told you a few episodes back that I was starting 75 hard and that rules be damned if it meant that I wasn't actually doing 75 hard. I didn't care. I was doing it my way because there were certain things that I did not believe I would be able to do, such as getting in two workouts a day, making sure that one of those is outdoors. That was really the main thing. And then following a diet is obviously very important, <laughs> but I feel like, I still feel like I do okay enough. I could do better, but I do okay enough to not get super strict with myself on that part of it. But as soon as I hurt my back, which was a little over a week in, I completely fell off. Like I couldn't even hit the gallon of water mark, which was one of the main goals for me to hit. I just, for some reason, I couldn't do it even when I was feeling better. So then I kept falling into that other loop of, well, I'll start tomorrow. Well, actually tomorrow's Friday. I'll start on Sunday. Well, Sunday didn't work out. Too. I'll start on Monday. Uh, I'll start in a couple days. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll start at the end of the month, <laughs> the beginning of the next month. And then... I think God stepped in because he knew I wanted to do this. I knew he knew I wanted to get going. And I saw someone post in Facebook saying that they were restarting 75 hard on October 1st. And that was coming up in just a couple of days from that point. And she was going to start a group because she knew a lot of people said they wanted to do it with her. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. So I joined the group. As I'm recording this, it is Monday the 4th. So I'm on day four and I'm doing really well so far. <laughs> I have actually even gotten in two workouts a day. And so far, one of them has been outside. I'm not promising that I'm going to maintain <laughs> that part of it, but I'm doing really well with the water, with reading the personal development, with making sure I'm getting the workouts in. And if one of them can't be outside, and I know that means that I'm not really doing 75 hard and I fail. That part, I still don't care. <laughs> the main thing is for me to implement, be consistent, and get that momentum going. Because more than motivation, it's the momentum. If you can keep yourself going, I hate this phrase, I don't know why, but an object in motion stays in motion, that whole thing. Once you get the momentum going it is easier to keep going. But back to the original implementation with all of the information collecting that I do, like for the longest time, that was one part of my problem. Clarity was another big piece, but implementing and fully implementing and sticking with it was a problem for me. I felt like I understood all of the concepts that went into the things that I wanted to do, like marketing on social media, growing a community, connecting with people, doing the whole sales thing when I would be in all of the network marketing companies that I was a part of, but it still felt like nothing ever worked. Again, clarity was a big thing, 
but the consistent implementation was the other huge half of that. There is a very strong chance that if I had at least just continued to show up, even if I wasn't 100% clear on what made me different, what specifically I offered, who I wanted to target, if I would have just kept going, kept trying new things, not telling myself that I was a failure just because something didn't work, but instead using it as an opportunity to tweak something and just keep trying, maybe I would have found clarity sooner. Because I have also learned, especially recently from experience, that just starting and and starting to be consistent and growing the momentum allows you to find clarity. So even if you're not 100% on what it is you're supposed to do, why you're supposed to do it, who you're supposed to do it for, what the end game is, what the road is or the funnel that you're going to take them down or any of that fancy stuff, no matter what it is that you're looking to do, you're really never going to have it all figured out. Even if you even if you have it all figured out and laid out, it's still going to end up changing as soon as you start and you start seeing the actual results and interactions that you're having with people and where they're leading and what people really need versus what you thought they needed. So implementation is huge. Don't be like me. (laughs) Stop collecting information. Finish the courses. Finish reading the books and then take action. Don't even don't wait until you finish. Take action as you're going through. That's part of my problem with courses. Not so much with courses. For some reason, I can take action as I'm going through it because I obviously can't go through the entire thing all at once. But something about reading a book, I don't stop to do (laughs) the actions at the time that they show up in the book. I'm like, well, let me read the whole thing and make sure I understand it first. You don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. (laughs) I need to tell myself not to do that. Take action as you're going through things. You'll learn more as you go and you can tweak later. The next one is gratitude. And I know you've heard this before. I know I've said this before and you're probably like, "Yeah, yeah, I know, I am grateful. But I heard a perfect analogy last week with another woman that I follow. I think she was the spiritual hustler before on Instagram and now she's the womb maven. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but her first name is Logan. And I've really enjoyed following her for a long time, watching her stories, learning from her. And then she led a masterclass that I joined in on last week. And one of the things that she talked about was gratitude and how... We need to make space in order to be able to hold more because especially if we feel like we're holding everything and we're struggling to hold it, we definitely don't have room for more. (laughs) But also the analogy that she gave, and maybe you've heard this before, I feel like I may have, but it if I had heard it before, I heard it with fresh ears this time. Think of a little kid on Christmas morning or on their birthday someday where they're opening a whole bunch of presents and they are just extremely ungrateful. Like they think the gifts are stupid or it's not exactly what they were looking for or it's a duplicate. Do you really want to give that kid anything else ever again? (laughs) Of course not, because if they're not grateful for what they already have, why would you want to give them anything else? Now, I don't believe that the universe is thinking that way or that God is thinking that way. Like, well, you're ungrateful. I'm not giving you anything ever again. But I do feel like there is a bit of a stopping (laughs) until you're able to refocus, show the gratitude and make the space for more. It's also right along the lines of what you focus on, you get more of. So if you're constantly focused on this idea that you're always struggling, that you always have to be strong, that you're never going to get anywhere, that everything always sucks, the universe says, okay, and they'll give you more. Because in the world of energetics, in the universe, all of those, whatever you want to call it, there is no positive or negative. So the universe isn't necessarily saying, well, you're thinking negatively, so all I'm going to give you is negative. It's that You're aligning with that vibration. So that's what you're open to receiving. That's what you're going to find. 
that's what the universe is going to send to you because that's what you're attracting. That's what you've become a magnet for. So if you can be mostly, I think it's impossible to be always, but if you can be mostly focused on the positive, being grateful for what you have, being pleasantly surprised at all the good things that maybe you didn't expect to happen, finding the good in things that might otherwise suck. And let's just talk about, let's just make it little things that might suck. Let's not talk about traumas or, or big events. Like, I don't think that's, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, oh, make sure you find the good. And like Katie Lane said, in the cancer diagnosis when you get it. No, <laughs> maybe down the road when you're ready to start refocusing. But that's not, I don't think that's realistic to expect anyone to do that immediately. But if you can maintain a decent percentage of your mindsets to have this positive forward thinking, believing in abundance, believing that there is always enough, there is always more, there is always room, there is always space, that things are overall going well, expecting that things are going to go well, or at least a better phrase for your highest good. (laughs) Maybe you won't see the good in it right away. But you might realize in hindsight that things worked out a certain way for a reason, even if you don't want to believe it immediately. But when you look back, you might realize that things maybe had to happen a certain way in order for this next amazing thing that came into your life to happen. If you can hold that space, then you have room for more. And finally, I don't know if I can call this a step, maybe it's more of a strategy, but it is something to work on that will help you to get into that momentum state, to get out of the struggle loop, to stop questioning yourself, to have some certainty in your path and what you're doing, is to trust your intuition. And it's a journey that I am still on, but I feel like Having started this journey with Reiki, it has helped open me up so much more to knowing when my intuition is speaking to me, to knowing when God is speaking to me, when Jesus has stepped in, (laughs) and to have that sense of peace and calm, even though there is still some stress around certain things for me, in knowing that I'm on the right path, I have the most peace that I have ever had of anything that I have ever done. (laughs) So how do you start to trust your intuition again, especially if you feel like you have a hard time tuning in? If you feel like maybe you do know when your intuition is speaking to you, but you never trust it, you don't go along with it, only to find out later that you should have listened to it, that you were right. Well, one of those, that's your first clue. If you are constantly finding out after the fact that you were right and you should have listened to your gut. Start listening to your gut. The only thing you can do is take that chance. The next time you feel that maybe a sense of dread, if you know something isn't right, trust it, follow it, do something about it. Even if you're worried because you haven't trusted it before, maybe prove yourself right this time. The only thing you can do is do it. There's no... I don't think there's necessarily a big process in between it. It's one of those things you just have to do it. Now, of course, the Reiki itself, having the energy work done for me, doing self-Reiki, and also practicing with the other women in my Reiki class and getting confirmation that they saw or felt or heard what I saw, felt, and heard. (laughs) There's no denying when There's no way, like you think something that you saw during a session, like, well, that was silly. Like I had to have just been making that up. Like, why would that have happened? And then you say it and the other person goes, yeah, I saw that too. Or even better still, you don't say anything and they tell you first and you're like, what? (laughs) You can't deny it then. You know, there's no way it was just your imagination if they experienced the same thing. So what if you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, but I don't want to learn Reiki. Like, I'm perfectly happy to receive Reiki, but it's not part of my path to become a Reiki practitioner. 
Well, <laughs> two other Reiki masters and I who went through all of the same Reiki courses together, Aaliyah Keeles and Sarah Howard, have put together a 14-week mastermind called Quantum Soul Activation. So we are literally working to activate your soul, to awaken you to all of your intuitive senses, to raise your vibration and awaken you to your purpose. So your intuitive senses are your clair senses. So things like clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, there's a whole list of them. And what we're going to do, the short version of what we're going to do in this mastermind is take a deep dive every two weeks into each individual chakra. You're going to receive guidance and healing from all three of us. So you have three, if I do say so myself, talented and powerful Reiki masters working to help you clear blocks in your chakras, things like money blocks, confidence blocks, relationship blocks, We'll explain what all of the chakras actually mean for real life. So we're giving you the woo side of it, but we're also going to show you what it means for your physical body, for your emotions, for your spirituality. And then we are also, as we go through these chakras and we come to the chakras that directly relate to each of the clair senses, we are going to attune you to those clear senses. So we're going to help to open them and to help you actually have some guided practice time to work on them. So it's not just the learning, there is implementation <laughs> there as well. So we are all really excited about this. Early bird pricing for it goes through October 10th. And if you're listening to this on the day that I release it, on Wednesday the 6th, I am doing a webinar inside my group, The Energy Within, and I'm going to show you in a lot more detail what it is that we're going to cover, how it's going to help you, what you can expect. Hi, JJ. So if you can be there live, it will be at noon central time, but you can also view the replay if you're not able to be there live. So you can still hop into the group after the fact and watch the replay. Feel free to leave comments asking me any questions that you have. Send me a DM with any questions that you might have or simply follow the link in the show notes and go right to the page and you can take a look at all of the explanation there as well as some testimonials of people who have worked with all three of us individually. <laughs> we actually haven't worked together for other people just yet. However, I don't have a date and a time to give you yet, but we are working on setting up a time for free leading up to this mastermind that the three of us will lead a Reiki session for you. So stay tuned for that. I'll announce it on the podcast if it is going to come at a time where I have time to announce it for you. But I'll also have it posted in my group and on my Instagram. So if you're not in the group or following me on Instagram, make sure you do that. The links for that are in the show notes as well. So we would love to see you in the mastermind. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. If you enjoyed this podcast, if you found any of the steps that I offered you helpful in guiding you out of that struggle loop, please share it so that it can reach more people. Take a screenshot, do a screen flow, post it to your social media, tag me and let me know what stuck out to you. You can find all of the links for everything in the show notes. Thank you so much as always for being here and I'll see you next time. 